All right, we're back. I got another uh, top 20% video. We have a special guest today with Anna Kruger from Taylor, South Carolina. Anna, welcome. Yes, thank you. Glad to be here. Thanks for yeah, having me. Fun. We just had a funny conversation because we basically were neighbors. Like I'm at Greenville Drive, she's at Taylor's. And we were like, what? You're yeah, I, I didn't connect that until we were on this video, y'all. So yeah, I learned something already and we hadn't even started the video. <laughs> <I know. laughs> um, so I'm excited about this. So you want to maybe tell us a little bit about where your specialty is or where we talk a lot about on these interviews, we'll talk about like magic zone, like where your special space where you move above and beyond where you're most comfortable. So I'd love to hear a little bit about you and what your sweet spot is. Yeah, I would say my sweet spot is how to be successful in sales without being salesy. <laughs> Ooh, I love that. <laughs> so I would call it the art of relationship-based sales, which also is known as lead gen lead conversion. Yet really my heart is that it's relationship-based sales. And I was a teacher. I always said I would never do business or sales. Here I am. Right. And I've been doing inside sales lead gen since 2006. And I've been teaching it, coaching it since 2008. So it's been, uh, it's been the thing that I've done for so long and it's the last thing I ever thought I would do, but I love it. I love seeing agents and people grow their businesses because I get the connection that when you're really good at lead gen lead conversion, that translates to we're paying for the college fund or we're taking care of our aging parents. And so that's what gets me going is the ripple effect of it. My goodness, you you and me are gonna be besties. It'll be might be a forced friendship, but my <laughs> like literally this morning I was talking about moving away from sales and moving into consultation and helping people make strong decisions for them and their families and yes. coming from value. So when you just said that, I was like, oh my gosh. Yes, that's so funny. So I have a quote I always say at the beginning of my class with maps, and I'm just gonna say it because you just said that. And I'll say it slow so people can write it down. But if you are an agent, inside sales agent, I would even, even say rainmaker or team leader. Like if you talk to humans, here's the goal, right? So here's the quote. Our job is to listen to people's stories. Our job is to listen to people's stories and then strategize and educate to help them get what they want. Oh gosh, that's it. <laughs> that's it. You want to yeah. mic drop and call it a day? Yeah, there we go. There, yeah, I'm gonna go eat some lunch. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But yeah, I mean, we're really real estate coaches. You know, whether you, your name or your title might be real estate agent or inside sales agent or rainmaker, but honestly, we're coaches. And a coach finds out what someone wants and then supports them, kindly pushes them to make sure they achieve it. And that's exactly what a real estate agent is. It's the, and through the art of asking questions to help them get where they want to be, not where you want them to be. I think yeah. is, that's awesome. I like that one literally gave me chills and I'm not just saying that. So <laughs> let's, let's rock and roll. So it's, it, you're, and I mean, you, you're wise to a lot of different parts of this. So, so why don't we um, talk to us a little bit about lead generation and okay. however you, I feel like you have a fancy way to say that, but lead generation. <laughs> and then um, I, I think that naturally just what follows that would be some conversion conversations. Yeah. Well, and I think lead generation comes from, I mean, there's so many different ways you can lead gen, but if I'm thinking relationship based, the best place to do that is sphere people you meet out in public. Uh, yesterday I had to take my dog to the vet. The vet got to talking. She was telling me about all of her other clients. And I was like, my brain was going to, oh my gosh, listen to all these people she works with that are business owners. And I just dropped in there that I worked in real estate. And like, I think a lot of it is you are a real estate agent everywhere you go. And you're looking at it as how can I add value to the people around me? So finding ways to just naturally bring it up when you're out and about with people. Mm -hmm. Obviously that also could be picking up the phone and calling a for sale by owner. It could be calling an expired, which we don't have a lot of right now, but we will eventually. Sure, sure. <laughs> so, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. There's not one right way. I know of people that they go to conventions like a wedding convention or a wedding expo, and they'll have some Louis Vuitton shoes. And I love this one, by the way. And they'll do a giveaway for the shoes, but you have to fill out a card. And it right. makes sense because if you're getting married, there's a good chance there could be real estate involved, right? So there's a lot of different ways you can do it. I don't know if that answers the question. No, it totally does. I love it. I heard it, the same thing with the TV in front of a, like a wedding thing, like give away a giant TV. Yes. But yeah. These are the life trigger events that we want to get in front of as agents. So our, 
our particular like uh, um, silo that we're in right now, this is top 20% or even top 10% that are on this video. So yeah. what are, so like, obviously we can sell houses, right? Cause we're in the top yeah. 10, 20%. Here, right. So what are the most like innovative things you've heard or where, what would your advice be on like, here's how to shake it up and pattern in a row? Yeah. Are you talking about lead gen specifically? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, my answer is actually not very innovative. It might be okay. disappointing. <laughs> I don't but know. See. This is this is what I find because I'm now a group coach, but I used to be a one on one coach with like 40 clients a week. And there was a theme that emerged and it was that they all got away from their top five sources. So I remember coaching a, a client who had sold hundreds of homes the year before and she could not get appointments to save her life for like a month. And Finally, I was like, who, like, what's going on? And I learned she was calling expireds, which she had never worked, but she, and she was completely neglecting the top five lead sources we uncovered from last year that was on her actual business plan. And that's one example of many. So honestly, I think a lot of times we think we need to innovate and there are certainly times for that. But I, I think probably most people, if you really look at what were your top five sources for closings and then ask yourself, honestly, am I working them at the level I could be? most people will say no. And that's actually where we should be spending our time. Once that yep. time, innovate, right? But usually that's not where it should be. That's if awesome. We to- I mean, it's a, we're a bunch of golden retrievers. It's like, what's shiny? What can we run toward? So what I heard you say was we're doing an autopsy on our success. We're seeing what got us here. Right. Leaning back into those things instead of chasing the fancy new shiny object. Yeah, like do what you do well. And I say that to myself as well, because I'm a golden retriever. <laughs> but like, yeah. don't get away from what works. And yeah. I feel like as a coach, I'm hired by people to just remind them of what they already know works. And my coach huh. does the same thing for me. Yeah. Like, my coach is always like, what did you do before that worked? And I'm like, you're amazing. And really, sh- all it was, was reminding me of past success and what works. So I would just encourage those watching, analyze what worked before and make sure you're still doing it. <laughs> okay, so a lot of times we it's it's a glass barrier, right? We can see through it, but we're not sure how to get through it. So dumb it down for me and tell me structurally. Yeah. Like if I'm a big agent and mm-hmm. I'm listening to this video right now, what would you say? How would I go back and analyze what's gotten me there? Give me an action item. Yeah, I would say go to the last 12 months. You could go further than you if you want, but at least 12 months. And don't, don't look at necessarily appointments set, seen, or held. Look at closing sources. Oh, yeah. So okay. where did your closings come from? What were your top five sources for closings? And I would actually say teams here probably have multiple people on the team if you're watching this. So then say I'm an inside sales agent on your team. I should also know my personal top five sources. So every hmm. single person on the team should know what's my sweet spot. What are my top five sources within this larger team that I'm a part of. And until, awesome. yeah. And until we can all say like, yeah, I, I can promise you I'm doing my top five sources. Great. Then I can innovate. That's so neat. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And you're saying at the sub agent level, listing agent, buyer agent, whatever, let's know what yeah. our five sources are as well as, as a team, we know these are our five key silos. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, on my team, I actually couldn't tell you what our top five sources were when I was at the Haro group. I couldn't tell you what our top five sources were. Like that wasn't what I was looking at as a team. When I was at myself, two of my top sources were FISBO and expired. I I could not stand sign calls, whereas other people on the team loved them. So there's an element of like, these people are good at these things and these people are good at these things and make sure each person's focused on where they're good at. I love that. That's cool. All right. So I'm going to ask it just because I know you know it. So <laughs> we've generated leads. What are you, you mentioned lead conversion later. So yeah. obviously that's how we figure out what leads sources to chase after is what closed, but what are you finding any tips or tricks around lead conversion given the market's nuts right now, right? Totally. Yeah. I think more than ever. And Gary talks about this in shift, which I've got MREA. <laughs> this is the survival guide right now, guys. Shift, yes. MREA, and like, by the way, I wasn't planning to pull them up. They literally are like, one's on my left hand, one's on my right hand here at my desk. <laughs> but in MRE or in a shift, Gary talks a lot about the importance of knowing someone's motivation and constantly reminding them of it. And okay. I know it can sound like a Hallmark card to say motivation is the key, but really, truly, that's what it is. Like, 
if you, I just recently started going back to the gym. I had been out of the gym for like two years and I was on the Jacob's ladder the other day, which kill me. <laughs> it sounds terrible. I don't know what it, it is. It sounds it's a ladder that never ends. It just, as you climb it, it drops. Yeah, it's horrible. Thank you. But as I'm on it, my trainer was in my ear saying red dress, grease, like your next birthday, keep going. And I had like this fresh energy. It took it from like, Oh, I don't want to be here to this is worth it. Like this is going to get me where I want to go. And then the reason I'm sharing this analogy is moving anytime is stressful. And then especially in today's market. And so if we don't know what our clients goals are, when they have that, like, oh, this is so frustrating. I don't want to be playing in today's market. We can throw stats their way, but the only thing that's really going to keep them moving is what their personal goal is. Why do they even want to do this in the first place? So honestly, it's getting their motivation on the front end, and it usually takes about three minutes. So it doesn't take that long, but people skip it, and I don't know all the reasons why. <laughs> Right. Well, it's, it's sales because they're, they're moving toward a transactional relationship and what you're talking about is moving toward them as a person. And how can I, you said I'm a real estate coach. Yeah. You're a real estate coach. How in the yeah. world, like imagine having a maps coach or any coach for that matter, or a personal trainer who just immediately jumped into the mechanics and didn't ask you anything about yourself. Right. And I'm going to assume the top 20% here, whether you have a coach or not, you like, you're watching this video, you have mentors, like how would it feel to have someone in your world, like pushing you along that honestly had no idea anything about what you wanted. That just doesn't feel good. No. Right. And it doesn't no. build rapport. So when you're the agent who gets the motivation, one, not a lot of agents do. So you already are more likely to be the agent they work with. Cause it's going to be, wow, you know, he really took the time to listen to me. He actually mm -hmm. knows me. None of the other agents asked me these questions. So that's going to help you get the appointment. But then once you have them engaged in the process, that constant reminding them of the motivation is what's going to get them to closing. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy. <laughs> you right, might have to write multiple yeah. offers, but yeah. that's the thing that's going to keep them engaged and pull them through. That's awesome. So the, yeah, know their motivation and then remind them of it. That's good. Constantly. Yeah. When, when you were talking about whatever terrible thing you were talking about, was it Jacob's Ladder <laughs> or something? It just sounds medieval, but whatever it is. It is. Um, <laughs> I was thinking in my head, like you were moving away from pain and he, he made that toward pleasure, right? He, she, whoever your coach was, right. Right? like red dress, vacation, red dress, vacation. And yeah. that, that's that dopamine response where it's like, yeah, I'm going towards something. I'm not running. Right. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. a, yeah. I hadn't even really thought about that, but yeah, you're right. They moved me away from, cause literally I was so focused on how painful it was literally. Yep. Painful. Yeah. And, I could visualize in my head, like I was visualizing myself on the white building with the water behind me and the red yep. dress and the wind in the picture. And yep. it totally changed the energy. And that's what we got to do for our clients. It's, it's I love that. Thing. That's awesome. You remember Diana used to say, she'd, she'd say, put your toes in the sand and tell people what it feels like. Like, can you feel the sand between your toes? And she's yeah. like, that. you got to visualize that. It's your red dress. That's all. Awesome. Yeah, red dress. Yeah. Um, so you got to so do that Go ahead. What's the last thing you said? I said, you just have to know that for your clients and then constantly bring it up. Yep. Yeah. That's great. Remind them of it. That's a good tip. All right. So, um, so lead gen, lead conversion, talk to me about one of the things that I know that you have experience with. I think it was outside of real estate, even before you got into real estate was having an ISA familiarity or a team. Yeah. I have found, so uh, I'm not in production, but I have a production team. That's been my biggest challenge. Cause it, it's, yeah. it makes sense in theory. I've seen Gene Rivers like map it out and tell me how the finances work. I cannot nail it. So yeah. give me some tips on that or some mindset around that. Yeah. I think the biggest thing and no joke, I'm teaching a class right now on with maps on how to hire an ISA. And I actually woke up in the middle of the night last night thinking, I forgot to mention this last week and I have to say it cause it's so important. So I'm going to tell you what it is. Let's go. Let's go. This is not a customer service position. It's a sales position. Oh. So see people mess up ISA is they look for the really nice person who feels bad and they just want to make sure everyone's happy with them. And I mean, I, I actually like that person, <laughs> but they're yeah. not going to do well in this position because it's a lot of rejection. It's, it's sales. It's a thousand percent sales that comes across customer servicey but it is a sales position. 
And the other thing is I get a ton of, I actually have had two emails today um, saying, hey, where can I outsource my ISA? Right. And one of the best things Haro did when he hired me is for like two days, basically he said, sit in the conference room and read this book until you're finished and then we'll do the next thing. And when I read this, I hadn't yet been like polluted with the way people talk about ISAs in this industry. The other industry thought of them very highly. In real estate, I feel like they're not spoken of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was like very foreign to me when I got into real estate. It's like a totally different culture about ISAs. So I was reading this, hadn't yet heard how real estate thinks about ISAs. And I remember thinking like, oh my gosh, Haro hired me for the thing that Gary says it's the hardest thing to replace. Like I almost, even right now, it almost was like, I was like, okay, right. like, it's <laughs> like my performance is going to mean we either keep our operations or we don't. Right. Because I'm the I'm functioning as a rainmaker. Like money will flow into the business or not, depending Based on my skill. So when I hear people talk about like how can I just outsource this or hey, do you know some company that can hire to do this for me? It's just so foreign to me based off what I read in this book. So, <laughs> Anna, that doesn't help me at all because what I wanted was an easy button. I wanted you yeah. to tell me, call these people. I know cost this much. So what does that mean yeah. to me if I'm pretending to be a rainmaker? Like what is what you just said? How do I apply that to my business? Because that just scared the hell out of me. Yeah. So it's finding someone that honestly is probably going to think and act a lot like you, honestly, because they're a rainmaker. Basically, you're going to hire a rainmaker who doesn't want the actual responsibility of hiring and actually being the rainmaker, for example. Yeah. It's like I love helping a business grow. But do I want to have accountability meetings and know why someone was late and hire and no, like, I don't want all that, but I love making a business grow. I love the challenge. And so you're really looking for someone who has a rainmaker type mindset, but they're looking maybe more for a set schedule. They don't want uh, all the headaches that come with running the business, but a lot of the top ISAs I know act a lot like their leader. They really do. Can this might be too much, but can you script that for me as a rainmaker? If you were trying to bring me into your organization, at least talk me through what that that language is, because this is a huge aha for me. Because I've always thought what you were saying about customer service. Let's rub everybody's back, but that right. So talk me through that, because I think that we need to know that as rainmakers. I think one of my favorite questions to ask an inside sales agent is if you were at a party and someone was kind of standoffish, what would your demeanor be towards them? And this is not science. This is not an official study. But what I have observed, asking this question for years and years, most of the time, not always, but most of the time, the top ISAs, they get like this little glint in their eye and they're like, ooh, I want to make them like me. There's like this challenge around, how can I win them over? Yeah. Something in them that's like, I want to get the person who's not real happy to like me. And yep. you want someone who has a lot of drive. So I would ask about how have they overcome failure? Tell me about something really difficult that you've overcome and how you did it. Like, what was your thinking about it? How did you do it? Um, you know, if, if you, if, if you get this might be a question more for the references, honestly, but when you have a rejection, how did they handle it? Yeah. Because that's a lot of what the how deep is a hit. Right. Yeah. Does that that's answer awesome. your question? Oh, a hundred percent. So, so okay. what does that posting look like? How are you going to get people into that conversation or where do you go to find those people? Yeah. So honestly, you can do an internet posting, but most of the time, and I, like I coach a lot of the teams in Keller Williams that are big because they have, they're the ones with the ISA yeah. teams and that's who I primarily coach. And I've asked them all, like, where'd you find your ISAs? There's one team that has a full-time recruiter. And because of that, they have the capacity to do an, a lot of online ads. Everyone else, it's fear past clients or vendor referrals. And what I, what I recommend is you each person is going to have to do this for their team. So there's some general characteristics we want, right? Like they like a challenge. They don't give up easily. They're a people right. person. They feel like a friend quickly. That that should be, I know it sounds like a Hallmark card, but they no, should no. I feel you. like a yeah. quickly. But then there's going to be things that are specific to your team. Like what's your team culture? Who, who would fit your team culture? And that will vary from team to team. 
Yep. And then I would think, who do I know in my sphere that fits this description or would know these people? So call them and describe exactly what you're looking for. I'm looking for someone who, you know, they might not be the most talkative person on the planet, but it wouldn't be weird if they struck up a conversation with someone at the grocery store line. Yeah. People like them. They're kind of charming. They like a chat. It's kind of rainmakery. It's totally a rainmaker. That's, that's, I never would have put the, I mean, that's, that's it awesome. It is a rainmaker. All right. Rain so, so, so we've got the, the why, the how, and what that looks like. So now tell me, are, are we salary? Are we incentive based? Like, are you, what's this pay structure? Just broad stroke. Like not, nothing yeah. super specific. It's funny. This is like an hour long class, but I will just that one question. <laughs> but oh, I'll answer okay. it as fast as I can. You can dodge it. So no, I'll I'll answer you. But um, there's a lot of ways you can do it. It's the bottom line. But I'll just tell you the best way. Okay. Best way is to get, make sure they're licensed. Yep. And then have base pay plus commission. Okay. And I'm going to be very direct, if that's okay. <laughs> Please. But you're hiring someone to do something that if they were to read this book, they would understand it's like the lifeblood skill. Please note, I believe every position is important. Like I can't survive without operations. Like every role is important. I'm not saying that, but it's kind of like if you have a car without gas in it, all the other parts right. aren't going to work. So if they read this book, they're going to understand I'm doing the part of lead conversion that's the most challenging because it's over the phone. Once we're in person for an appointment, bop, bop, it's bop. a lot easier. So if they're not paid appropriately, they'll very quickly think, well, why don't I just go do this for myself? Yeah, right, for sure. like, So we want to make sure that there's a base pay plus a commission structure where they can make as much money as they want. And really truly the sky is the limit because if I want to make more money, I just need to bring you more clothes. That's right. Right. So Love base pay that. plus commission is the way to find them. And I will say, I've seen a lot of teams, they'll offer like 24K base plus commission, but the ones that are attracting for their first ISA, someone who has experience, maybe they've run a call center. I've just seen a trend where they're offering 40K base plus commission because- but you need talent. Uh, yeah, if you want that first, like if you only want to hire one ISA, hire one that has experience and they're going to want to hire than 24K base to so get cool. started. So, you All know, right, so, you gotta know your budget and everything to know if you can afford that, but that's, right. if you can swing it, that's a good way to go. I love that. So, um, so let's, let's loop that. So you said this is hour long class. So you teach this. I do. Yeah. And in fact, in 15 minutes, <laughs> I'm teaching class yeah. two of, uh, there's two classes, how to hire, train and retain ISAs. Okay. And I teach that through maps. And then I also teach mastering inside sales also through maps. And both classes are currently running, depending on when you're watching this video. I know it's on YouTube, so it may not be running when you watch this. Mm -hmm. But if you go to annascoaching.com or isamapscoaching.com, they all take you to the same place. Okay. Um, you'll see both classes listed there. But today is what, March 24th, something, 24th? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right now, both classes are open. Uh, okay. so, so, so that's just Google Maps and it, you can find it in there. Yeah, or just go to the Maps website, mapscoaching.com slash group. Okay. And you'll see all the Maps classes. And in that list of all of them, you'll see Mastering Inside Sales. Yep. And you will also see how to hire, train, and retain ISAs. If you're interested in that one, just know it's five weeks and we don't offer it again until June. So if you want to be in the class, how to hire, train, and retain ISAs, you want to do that in the next like two I, weeks. I'm, gonna I'm doing it. I mean, uh, that's okay. that's gonna be yeah, that's awesome. Cool. Well, well I know you, I know you got another thing coming up. So I want I always ask one question at the end. So a thank you for yeah you rocked my world. Yeah, I'm gonna as soon as we turn the recording off, I'm gonna be like so. Um, <laughs> how can we be friends? <laughs> exactly. Uh, what I'd like to know is I always ask what's in your bag as far as books. So are you reading yeah. anything right now that's impactful? Yes. Um, so it's funny you ask because I pretty much have this with me everywhere. And I have to thank Haro. Haro is the one that introduced me to this book. Okay. Uh, but living forward, I will be honest with you. I'm a podcast listener. I don't read as because I don't sit still. Yeah, me either. So I love podcasts, but this book, I read at least once a year and I reference it all the time. So this book, in, it just basically helps you get clear on what's important to you so you don't wake up in 20 years and realize I climbed the ladder of success and it was the wrong ladder. Yep. yep. <laughs> it helps you decide what's important to me 
and that filters all your other decisions. So since reading this book, I've said no to a lot of great opportunities that people might say, you're crazy to say no to that. And I have total peace about it because I know what is important to me. And that makes it really easy to know what, what to say yes to, what to say no to. Yeah. So. I've, I've often say that like it, it's the, the story of the David statue, but about Michelangelo setting him free. It's like the way you get to what you want is you get rid of the things you don't want to get to the things you do want. So yeah. I love that. There's another good book. Um, and this one has faith faith integrated into it and it's called the best yes and it's yep. the same con- it, it doesn't go as detailed as this but I would say this would be like book one book two could be the best yes because once you're clear the best yes helps you know like good is in the way of the best so something so might be good but that doesn't mean it's the thing you should say yes to that's so good all right well thank you thank you thank you my biggest takeaway was the title the art of relationship-based sales. I mean, that you nailed me right in the beginning. So thanks for being so authentic and taking some time. I I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me here. It's it's fun. You're a great interviewer. Awesome. Oh, (laughs) thanks. Thanks. I'm trying to get better. Um, Cool. Thank you.